Hi, I'm Rochelle with Originally Worn, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to refinish already stained cabinet tree with gel stain. This technique also works great on furniture and tabletops. Um, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and you can find us online at OriginallyWornOnline.com and on Facebook and Instagram. I'm gonna demonstrate this cabinet uh, restaining technique on this is the original uh, kind of a golden oak, honey oak cabinet, and it is going to turn out like this, which is an antique walnut type of color. For this process, I'm going to be using uh, General Finishes Gel Stain and Antique Walnut, and then we're gonna to be top coating it with General Finishes Armor Seal in Satin. If you're working on cabinetry, you're gonna to need to take your doors off of all of their hinges. Um, and take your hardware off. Be sure to mark your hinges and your location of your doors if you're gonna be putting them back up. Um, this isn't such a crucial step when you're working on furniture. But the first step you're gonna do is you're gonna to need to clean uh, the years of grime and gross off of your furniture. Almost everyone's cabinets are disgusting, so don't feel bad. Uh, to do this, you need a bucket of hot soapy water. Um, hot water, a glug of vinegar, and a little bit of dish soap, and a Scotch-Rite bright cleaning pad. Uh, I have gloves because, like I said, everyone's cabinets are super gross. So you're literally gonna just take your scrubby sponge and work it in here and clean all of your crevices out. Um, prep work is super important, especially when it comes to using stains. Um, they seem to be a little bit more finicky than the Annie Sloan paint that I like to use. In fact, if you're wanting to paint, I have a really good uh, couple different tutorials on how to paint cabinet tree. Uh, I'll put the links to them above. One of them talks about painting it and then top coating with um, a general finishes top coat. And then one talks about painting and top coating with uh, wax. I like to do both. Kind of just depends on what the client wants in their house and what the end look is wanted. I really don't think one is better over the other. So we're gonna go around, we're gonna clean um, all the sides of all the cabinet doors for the kitchen and then I'll be back with the next step. After your door is clean, you're going to need to give it a scuff sand with I have here um, a medium sanding block and then I have a 220 sanding sponge. So you're gonna take it along and sand all your parts and all of, you can use, these are more flexible. They can kind of bend into these crevices a little bit better. You really wanna get all into all the surfaces. Um, kind of get an equal sand over everything. Your stain will be equal. If you're working on something that's a completely flat surface that doesn't have like the grooves like these doors do, um, certainly get out your palm sander. Uh, that'll be a lot faster and a lot easier, but these grooves ended up needing to be hand sand anyway, and I like to then just hand sand everything so that your flat surface doesn't have a different kind of amount of stain left on there than your groove surfaces. So they try to stay, take the stain the same way. Um, so we'll just go in and get all these edges. Now you don't have to try to sand kind of the, the whole finish off and the stain off like you would in traditional staining. That's why it's called gel staining because it sits on top. It doesn't soak into the wood. And that's what gives this option a really good um, option over maybe doing a traditional stain. Once your sanding is done, then I like to just wipe off the excess sanding dust with um, a separate rag, just so it doesn't dirty up my next step very much. And then I'm going to scrub the door again with a mixture of 50-50 denatured alcohol and water. This will give a really good um, surface free of any sort of like type of chemicals or like that that can cause your stuff not to stick. 
So I have it mixed up here in my container and I'm taking it a Scotch-Brite bright pad again and I'm gonna scrub the door with the mixture of the denatured alcohol and the water after I've sanded it. Once you've prepped your doors and everything is dry, I usually let mine dry overnight because they really need to be dried out because you're gonna be working with an oil-based product now. Um, you can do the first layer. I am going to combine two techniques. Um, one is where you like put all the stain all over and then wipe it off. And then one is a dry brush technique. People do each of these techniques separately on their own to accomplish this. This is really just like what I like to do. Um, the reason being is that typically when you have a pre-existing finish and you do the dry brush technique, that'll hold the staying kind of the best and you build on top of your layers. But I feel in these cabinet doors with big crevices that I can't get into those crevices very well. So if the first layer I do kind of floods all of the little spots and then I wipe it back off, as you'll see, then I feel like it kind of gets in all the grooves, even though you're really gonna feel like you're wiping a ton of product off on this first layer. But this is just the first one, the rest won't be done like this. And if this doesn't suit you, by all means, skip to the next layer um, and just dry brush all the layers. It's just what I found that I like. So I have a cheap sponge brush here. Um, this is, is an oil-based product, so I just like to throw my brushes away when I'm done uh, because I hate to clean with mineral spirits. And then I have uh, General Finishes Antique Walnut Gel Stain. It's a nice, rich, dark color, but not like crazy dark. Um, so you can see I'm going along and I'm trying to really focus on getting it all in those little grooves. So when I do do my next steps, I can kind of not mess with the grooves as much and more worry about the all over look. Cause as you're dry brushing the next couple steps, you're kind of going over the top surface and it doesn't seem to get into those really well as kind of flooding the whole thing. If you're doing this on a bigger surface than a cabinet door, you're gonna to need to work in sections or add extender to your gel stain. Um, General Finishes makes a product called extender. I would not mix it in your actual container. I would mix it on a plate on the side or something like that. Um, it allows you to work with it fast or longer, but I just try to work kind of fast getting it in all the areas and going with the grain. So I've done the inner parts on a cabinet door. That's usually how I work. Even if I'm painting the inner kind of groove, the inner panel, and then the outer shortest panels. Like I said, you're really wanting to go with the grain here. And you kind of stick these brushes in the side groove of a cabinet door and it works well. And we're gonna wipe most of this off, but it really floods the area as well. Put some up here. And typically I do, uh, do the backs of the doors first. Um, I'm showing you here on the front just because it's a little easier to see in the grooves of this particular door on the front of the door. Okay, one side left. So now I have everything covered, I'm going to wipe off the center parts and in the direction of the grain. And you're gonna see that most of it does come back off. Um, again, it's more about getting in all those grooves. And you can kind of go back and forth with this stuff. You can wipe it all off. The better you sand this first layer in the prep, the better the, better the first layer is gonna stick in your stain there, or your stain's gonna stick. Especially if you have a big flat tabletop, you know, go ahead and sand it with an electric sander. But cabinet doors, 
those grooves are harder to sand. Okay, so you see I got a big majority of it off there, but it looks kind of crazy crappy all over. So now I'm gonna kind of go in and really take the excess off. And I'm leaving some in the grooves there, but not too much. Then I won't have to worry about them in the next steps. And it's starting to get a little bit tackier. So you can see the middle portion there is kind of white back. Now I'll go to these ends here and wipe with the grain there. And I have a Lazy Susan underneath this. You can see how I can spin it really well. And I've done both ends and then I'll kind of come and do the sides. And this side. And then before you set it up to dry, just check and make sure you don't have any globs anywhere of anything. I, I kind of got a lot in that corner. Clean that up with my fingernail. And this will give us a good color base to kind of start building our dry brush finish on it. If you just kept doing this technique over and over, it doesn't really seem like you can get a really dark finish on it. You get a little bit darker, but not as much as the dry brush. So I think this is a recoat time of 12 to 24 hours. Um, I'm gonna set them up and let them dry so they're really good and check on that recoat time. Now that I have done both sides and they've dried well overnight, the next step we're going to do is put the second layer of stain on, but we're gonna do this in the dry brush method. Uh, we're still gonna be using our antique walnut stain and you'll need two chip brushes and a paper towel or an old rag to kind of knock off the excess stain with. Um, you're gonna need to get a little bit on your brush here. The reason being we, why we don't do like the white method again is because um, basically by putting a new layer of stain down and then using pressure to wipe it back up, it's gonna activate some of that first layer of stain and kind of take it back off. So we have a little bit of stain there on that and we're going to wipe off some of the excess and then you're gonna go in with your brush and go kind of with the grain and you do what's called a dry brush. And we're just trying to kind of get uh, another layer of color over everything. If you can, if I tip this, if you can see the difference from that side to that side there, it's not a, a huge amount. Um, Again, be sure to go with the grain. So like if you're doing that top piece, I'm gonna go then with my brush and kind of go sideways with it here. It's not the easiest thing in the world, um, but it's way easier than stripping these whole things all the way down. And so on the edges, I'm kind of moving with the edge there and I'll get a little bit more stain here. You can certainly, of course, put some in a cup. So you don't have to dig down in your paint there. So I have a little bit more and I knock, knock the excess off. And if you get too much on, you can take this extra brush that you have here and kind of dry brush more off. That seems to work to kind of work in two ways. This brush, because I've just started, is pretty dry in itself, so I'm not needing to grab the other one, but as you get going, these will get kind of full, and you might need to go back and forth a little bit, or clean your brush out. I mean, it's, it could be that simple, too. So, there I've done both the top parts. Whoop, not sure if you can see that on there. And this layer, can look 
kind of bad. Oops. Um, I have had parts that don't look the best on it. But just be careful with your brush strokes and the third layer kind of evens everything out a little bit better. Careful that you don't have any like crazy buildup anywhere like that right there I had. And I actually also have another piece of paper towel after I finish the edges. Grab another one. I like to take it with my tip of my finger and go underneath of it and get any excess so you don't have an excess ridge on um, the underneath or the back side. And I do this whether I'm working on the front or the back. So I'm going to now finish up doing this method all over. See, I'm gonna get it in here. Again, kind of with the grain. Of course, these edges and crevices always lend themselves to a little bit of trouble. It takes some more um, stain off of my kind of my knockoff dry brush pad there to just get a little bit excess, a little bit extra stain. So now I've done pretty much everything but my center panel. I'm just gonna try to do big sweeping motions. And I need a little bit more stain. Try not to build up one area more than the other. So I'm going to Finish this second layer, let it dry overnight too, and then again, do the backs, and I'll be back for the third layer. After you've done a second layer of stain on both the front and back, and let it dry to where it's not tacky at all, you're gonna do the third layer of stain in the very same kind of method. So you have, this is a, a stain brush I'm using today. And you get a little bit of stain and then you uh, blot some off. Of course, I just go in and I'm gonna start to build up another layer all over. And definitely going um, with the grain. A little bit more stain. Kinda just start to spread it all out. Get it in your edges here. You can wipe back on this layer a little bit, but be careful you don't take your previous layers with you. It's better just to kind of build like this. So then I do the center panels and then I'm gonna go do the two end panels here. I'll spin my thing and get a little bit more stain and then go with the grain in the direction of the, this end panel. Oops, I need more in that corner. There we go. And smooth it all out. Make sure to get your edges. And then you're going to take your brush and smooth out your edge here, because your grain is going this direction, you don't want your brush strokes to go the wrong way. Because this is really just building thin layers of kind of standing stain, transparent stain. It's not like, you know, where you have actual stain where it goes, works into the grain as much. So we're kind of faking it a little bit. A little bit of faux painting and staining at the same time. So now I've done it to the other edge there. Little hair. And now I'm gonna smooth out those edges.
And then lastly, kind of get my long sides in. So you can see right there the difference between the non-stained and the next layer of stain. It slowly builds color. It's a long process. All right, check over everything. Make sure your brush strokes are going in the right directions. And then I like to take a clean paper towel Kind of run it along the underneath here just to be sure that I didn't goober a bunch under there so the other side doesn't have a weird line to it. And then um, let this dry a day, do the back, and then we'll be on to the next step. Now that our stain is dry, we're going to top coat. I'm going to be top coating with uh, General Finishes Armor Seal uh, in satin. This is a polyurethane. Um, oil-based sealer. I like it. Uh, it's not goopy and thick like the gel stain and some people like the gel stain or like the gel top coat for that reason. I like this because it's a wipe on wipe off thing. So I literally have, I've stirred it up. I have a cheap foam brush. I'm gonna dip some in there and go all across my whole surface. you're gonna need two to three coats. Oh, I think it's actually three coats of this stuff. Um, and you can lightly sand with a 220 sanding sponge in between each of your coats. Uh, not necessarily for like adhesion purposes, but more for like imperfections. So there you go, you just put, put your armor seal on there. It gives a kind of shiny, Thing. You can see where it's thick. Take a lint free rag and just kind of wipe with the grain. You want to brush with the grain. You want to wipe off with the grain. You don't have to like buff it out. You'll, you'll be able to see kind of what the excess is. I'm just going to lightly take off the excess. So I've taken off the excess and I'm actually, because it's a cabinet door, make sure I go around the edges here and that I didn't get any big goobers down the side and then I'll let them dry. I believe it is for um, 12 to 24 hours till you recoat this. Now that your first layer has dried um, to where it's smooth to the touch, usually recommend between 12 and 24 hours, you can take a 220 sanding pad or um, like steel, fine grit steel wool and you're just gonna really do a very light pass over everything with it. Um, this isn't necessarily for adhesion purposes, more just to give you this silky smooth finish. If you do get a lot of dust on that, you can take a lint-free towel and take some of it back off and kind of clean up the dust off. So you'll have kind of, I don't know if you can see that dust on there. Um, then you're gonna take your, again, your top coat and a cheap foam brush, dip it in there and kind of lay it down again all over. And it's like a butter smooth feeling when you sand it in between layers. It just helps give it like all the little burrs or maybe some hairs or something like that that got stuck in there, the chance to get out. So cover your whole door with your top coat again. And then we're going to Wipe off the excess just with a lint-free towel. So I have a bunch here. Kind of can fold one up and just give it a couple wipes in the direction of the grain. I always uh, paint and stain and top coat in the direction of the grain. If there are some breaks then with your brushes, it just kind of looks natural like that and it tricks the eye. So this is, we're gonna let this then dry again for the, the 24 to, or 12 to 24 hours. And that's what it looks like now, kind of wet. You can see um, that. And then I'm gonna repeat those steps. So I'm gonna sand it again, wipe off the excess sanding dust, and then top coat it a third time. 
after that. Um, I try to let it cure as long as possible to, before I put the project back together. Um, all top cooks take about three weeks to cure to like a rock hard state, but I'll probably hang these cabinet doors back up after just a couple days of everything curing and just tell the homeowners to be a little gentle with them. So I hope this helps you guys. Um, be sure to subscribe below to our YouTube channel and you can find us on Facebook at uh, Originally Worn and you can find us online at OriginallyWornOnline.com and then you can find these products that are in this video um, at our Amazon store. Hope you guys have a good day. Happy painting.